Hey, what's up guys? It's Jermaine here and I'm so happy to be back with you. Um, guys, for today, I'm going to take you through a bit of a process and structure that I use in order to solve really complex problems. So, you know on Avoiding Broke, we try to take you through a lot of our thought process, our logic, our rationale for helping to deal with a whole range of different challenges. And I think in the environment that we're currently in right now, you're seeing a lot of people in that 16 to 25 bracket and older as well, who are struggling with jobs, they've got some insecurities at home, they may have their own financial pressures. And it's really important we've got the skills to learn how to solve those problems. So I'm gonna be running you through on this video and a few others that follow, some of the structures that I use to solve a range of different problems, and it just helps get my thinking ordered and in check. So guys, before we jump in, please do me a massive favor and just smash that like button down there for me, please. It's a huge thing that really helps us um, communicate our message in our videos to more people who find it useful. So guys, the first thing to think about when any of these challenges come up is just how unpredictable everything is. So I'm just gonna put in the middle of our board here, unpredictable. Unpredictable. Because it's super important that we recognize, guys, from the outset, we are pushing against the current sometimes. Because when you've got anything that's unpredictable, you just associate it with a real lack of certainty. And for me, right, when you've got no certainty in a situation, the skills you need to deal with it are a little bit different. Because if you haven't got any certainty, you've got to work in a lot more grey areas. And you can take fewer specific actions. You need to take kind of more calculated odds. And so for me, it's really important that we recognise our situations as being more unpredictable than they've ever been before. Frankly, COVID has done that to a lot of situations. And we understand that when we have less certainty, that means we're going to have to play in more gray areas. So the first thing that I love to do, guys, when we're going through this journey, number one, I'm gonna put it right here on the left-hand side of the board, is look at the situation. Now, when you say look at the situation, for me, this is all about objective assessment. It's about making sure we are clear on what problem, what challenge we are facing. So let's give an example. Say for example, I'm currently looking at um, whether to invest in rental property. So our subject, let's just put our subject up here, is investing INV houses. Okay? So that's gonna be our subject, investing in houses. The situation that we're looking at is we've got a question mark on whether houses are lucrative. We've got a question mark on whether they are stable. We've got a question mark on the cost. We've got a question mark on the returns. That's just to name a few guys. But straight away, an objective assessment of the situation that we're looking at starts telling us that we have got a number of different question marks. And when you start looking at things objectively, one powerful thing it does is it stops you worrying so much. Because I know all of these things are really uncertain. I don't need to stress out about them. I need to find ways of acknowledging them. and I need to try and plug some of the information gaps. And now you can apply the same thing. Say, for example, you're looking for a job. You'll have question marks about the job market, about your current skill set, about the general nature of the employer you're looking at. Whatever it is, when you bring in objectivity, objectivity, what it equals is less worrying. less worrying. For me, that's super crucial, guys, because part of the game that we're playing here is knowing how to control our emotions and our stress levels. So the more objective we can be is the less we need to worry. And that's why looking at your situation in detail is really powerful. 
So the next thing we'll do, we're just going to rub off as we go along, is we have to look at any complications. We look at the situation, and the key thing here is objectivity. We then look at any complications. So complications are genuinely exactly as it says. Things that we know could go wrong. Things that we know are currently changing the dynamics of whatever market or situation that we're looking at. So when you look at investment property, some of the complications include the level of employment. Because obviously people need to be employed in order to um, be able to afford rental properties. It includes the availability, I'm just going to put avail, of mortgages. So if I want to mortgage a property, I need to be able to have those mortgages available. If they're not there, you can't go and get the mortgage in order to do the investing. You've got general complications related to COVID. COVID is changing everything, including time, it is changing people's demand. This is time to get stuff done. It's changing demand. It may even change uh, my affordability. Who knows? I hope it doesn't. But it may change that. So you can see here, guys, when we've got complex problems and we start looking at the nature of complications, we start to get a more rounded view of our risk. And when you're solving complex problems, you always want to understand your risk as best you can. So we're going to run through here. And our complications are going to all be about risk. So point number three, guys, right? Is then I want to go through and I want to look at my key questions. Now... Guys, questions, your ability to ask good questions and think through logically is a huge skill. It's a massive differentiator. And I've always been told by the real titans that I've ever worked with, I've known or have mentored me, always ask the next question. So if I'm here looking at the investment properties, I'm looking at different questions that I need to be asking and I need to be thinking about in order to operate in the grey areas. So I need to be thinking about my personal uh, risk appetite. So you can see above, I assess my risk, and then I need to be thinking, well, how much risk do I want to be taking on? I want to be thinking about timing. Because basically, if I invest in a property, I've got a cash flowing asset. So even if I think the market could take a dip, so long as I'm getting that cash flow, that cash flow is helping to cover me against any kind of dip in the market. I'm also then thinking, about cash flow because again as long as you're, you don't have the exposure you don't have the cash flow coming in I've got to be thinking about my objectives because you always have to do that kind of sense check guys to make sure the decision you're making fits with your big plan and if you just change this um, this questions point around and we looked at a different example say we were looking at the job market Look, some of the questions you might be asking yourself is, how long can I afford to be without a job? You know, is there, if I were not working, what would I be doing with my time instead? Is there something that's more valuable? You've got to ask those really funky questions that put you in the grey area, because that's what's going to give you the tools to really start um, making that weighted judgment. And what this is all about, guys, is judgment. You know, because in life, we often like to have certainty. But when you're making big decisions, you don't really have much. You've got good judgment. So the questions are what help you shape your judgment. Okay. So here we're going to have questions. And for us, this is all about judgment. We balance the risk. We balance the objective assessment. And we start to think about what questions are going to help us understand the grey area. And then question four, point four is all about answers. And for me, answers equal actions. And the key thing, guys, about making big decisions and complex decisions is you haven't got to get it all right. And sometimes we put that kind of pressure on ourselves to want to get it right. And we always think, oh, yeah, yeah, we need to do more and we, 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 we can't be wrong. Guys, I tell you for free, 
when making the most complicated decisions I've ever had to make, or when dealing with the most challenging scenarios, the number one thing is you don't always get it right. You try to make the best decision you can with the information you've got, and you have to commit to being adaptable. That means if you think it's not going right, know when to change course, know when to course correct. Answers is all about actions plus changing course if needed, yeah? Change course. So maybe a better way of writing this, adaptability. And you can see, guys, there's an example of changing course. Actions plus adaptability. It's a big commitment. There it is. And guys, there you have it. This is my take on a great model to help you start solving more and more complex problems. Problems of any kind of nature, because you can apply this to work. Here we've applied it to my personal investing. If you're looking for a new job or if you've been furloughed or if you've been made redundant, you can apply it there as well. It's all about object number one is objectively assessing the situation you find yourself in. Try to take your emotion out of it and say, what are the facts in front of me? Number two is assessing your risk. Look at the complications, understand the risks around the situation. These are the things you're gonna to have to manage. Number three is ask great questions to help you work through the gray areas, work through the things you're not certain of. And number four is have some actions and be willing to adapt. And guys, I promise you, if you follow this kind of model and you can work it through on paper yourself for any tricky situation you're facing, give it a go and I bet you you're gonna have more clarity and purpose in what you're doing. As ever, guys, it's been my pleasure to be here helping you. If you've enjoyed what you've seen and enjoyed what you heard, smash the like button and please share with more people you think are going to benefit. Until the next video, guys, I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.